this. Hi, and welcome back to the video. In this video, we are going to configure Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager on the Shopify store so we can track begin checkout event where the user is almost on the final thank you page, but just on the card page. This video has been divided into four different sections so you can go through each section based on however you feel like it. In the first section, there are going to be some prerequisites. You need to have a Google Tag Manager container and you need to have a Google Analytics account as well as a Shopify store. We have already configured Google Tag Manager container on the Shopify store. And if you have not done that, you can refer to this video where you will find an in-depth detail on how to add tracking code on your Shopify store so you can track events on the user front end as well as on the final thank you pages. In the first section of the video, we are going to configure the configuration tag on Google Tag Manager. The configuration tag is basically responsible for tracking user interactions such as page view, user engagement, scroll, and all these other details. These events are automatically configured by Google Analytics 4 and for whatever reason, if you want to edit or block them, you can do that in the settings, but that is not covered in this video. Uh, in the first section of this video, we are going to set up the configuration tag. So let's just head over to my computer and start that. Let's go to the analytics account so we can get the measurement ID. The measurement ID is something that we are going to use to send the data from the website back to the Google Analytics account. On the bottom left corner, you will find the option for admin and on the second column, which is for property settings column, you will find the option for data stream. Data streams are just like pipelines and pipeline is basically connected to different things to making the data flow easier. Uh, if you already have a data stream, that's well and good. Otherwise, you can create a new one. We already have one. So we are just going to copy the measurement ID that we have and head over back to the Google Tag Manager container. In the Google Tag Manager container account, we are going to be creating variables so we can reuse the same IDs without creating multiple copies of them. So you can head down to the variable section where we will create this new constant user defined ID. Under the user defined variable, click on new and just click anywhere on the tag configuration. We are going to look for the constant. Constant variable is basically something that is not going to change its value depending on any kind of function or behavior of the website. Since the measurement ID is not going to change for each user as the data flow is going to be in the same analytics property, we are going to create a constant for this one. Let's rename it to GA4 measurement ID. Uh, ignore my spellings because my English is a little weaker. Uh, hit save. Now let's go back to the tag section where we are going to create the first tag that will find the configuration events. Uh, on the top right corner, you can see the option for new. And since this is the configuration tag and we want this tag to fire on all the pages of the website, so let's select the trigger for built-in all pages. Under the tag configuration, you might see that previously we used to have GA4 configuration tag. If you're using an older version of Google Tag Manager, you will still see the same Google Tag Manager configuration tag. But since this is the new Google Tag Manager container that we have created, you are going to be represented with the option for Google Tag. Google Tag is the newer version of using the same thing, but in a different format. Under the tag ID, we are going to select the measurement ID constant that we just created a few minutes ago. And that's all what we need to do. We are going to rename the tag to G tag. GA4 configuration tag. You can have more than one G tag. Again, apologies for my great spellings. Uh, let's hit save. And this concludes the first section of the video where we have successfully added the GA4 configuration tag. And we can hit preview to see if the tag is working properly on the website or not. Once you will hit the preview button on the top right corner like just we did and enter the URL of the website. We are using a dummy Shopify store for this tutorial. You can download the Google Tag Assistant legacy Chrome extension to see what kind of Google Tags are fighting on the website. We have one Google Tag Manager and one global site tag for GA4. You might see that the Google Tag Manager is showing twice, but don't worry about this thing. It's, it's a common glitch that happens in this kind of thing. Anyhow, uh, once you go back to the debug view, you can see that uh, the or the container loaded event, the Google Tag configuration tag has fired. And on the top, you can see two different containers. One is for Google Tag Manager and the other one is for the GA4. You can see that on the config event, it has sent a page reading. You can also verify this by going directly to the analytics account. Under the admin, you are going to find an option for debug view. All the events that we are going to do by connecting the preview window to your Shopify store, you can see all of these events here in the debug view. So in the first section, we have successfully added a uh, configuration tag. So that's well and good, right? So now let's just start the second step. Let's head over back to the website to exactly see where the begin checkout event actually fires. So if you will click on the card button, you will see that there is one option for the checkout 
on the bottom of the page. And then there is one more option where the same checkout button appears. That is when you add an item to the cart. And as soon as you add an item to the cart, it shows you with a pop-up window that says whether you want to view your cart. And second is this option for view checkout directly. Uh, however, if you inspect this window, you're going to find one thing that is common with all of these buttons. That is that all of these events are firing on the same uh, button which has the name equals checkout element attached to it. So there are two ways to do this one. In this second section, we are going to see how you can request the developer to add this data layer code. So you don't have to worry about anything and you can just stick to the Google Tag Manager and configuring this event. In the third section, we will see how we can add the code ourselves. And in the final section, we will just do the testing and make sure everything is working all right. So if you want to see the code that you have to send to the developer, you can refer down to the description and you will find a link. And in the link, you will find a document which has all the details provided and you can just send that document directly to the developer and they will add the events for you. Once the developer has added the events, you will find trigger and a custom event that looks something like this. So once the developer has added that event, you can head over to the section four and do the same thing. However, if you don't have a developer and you have to add the code yourself, the link for the code is also in the description and you can go and copy the code and follow the section three of this video and everything should be fine. All right, so in the third section of this video, we are going to see how we can add the code for begin checkout event on the theme file of the website so we can track the events. Uh, perfect. Once you have copied the code from the link below, you can head over to the Shopify store. In the Shopify store, you are going to click on the online store section. By default, it will take you to the themes. However, if you are not already on the theme section, just click on the theme so you are on this particular dashboard. Depending on how, when you are watching this video, you will have the option for three dots and you can click on edit code. By clicking on the edit code, it will take you to the theme files of the website. And what we are going to do is we are going to locate the theme.liquid file. All right. And we are going to to identify where we have the Google Tag Manager container code and right below this container code, you are going to paste the code that you have copied. All right, once you have pasted the code, you can hit format code and hit save. Format code is not a necessary step. I just like how incantated everything looks and it's just great. So once you have hit save, you can go back to the Google Tag Manager container and hit preview. This step is not required because we already have the preview window connected, but it is always better to make sure everything is fresh in the connection. Once you're here, let's just go to the card and see begin checkout event is working. Let's just hit on checkout and go back to the debug view. We can see some of the details that is already coming into the data and now we are going to create the triggers and tags so we can track all of these events. In the fourth section, we are going to configure the tags and trigger so that we can track all of these events. In this last final section, we are going to create tags and trigger that will be used to track these begin checkout event on the final thing. You might notice that the event name coming in is custom underscore begin checkout. The only reason for using custom underscore prefix is that begin checkout is a standard GA4 event name and we don't want to mix up with the any other event that you might have fighting on the website. So let's just go back to the tag manager and go to triggers. We are going to create a trigger that will fire on this custom event. So let's hit new. Under the trigger configuration, click anywhere and then we are going to select search for custom event. The name of the custom event is going to be the same begin checkout. So let's copy this name. Go back to the Google tag manager paste it here and rename it as custom event, custom underscore begin checkout, which is the name of the event. Uh, in order to track some other details such as items, revenue, and all these other details, we need something else too. And in the latest version of Google Tag Manager, they have introduced something called GA4 event parameters. This is similar to how we have setting variables for universal analytics. And these are the setting variables for events that we are using. So we can create an event setting parameter for all the events that we are sending back to GA4 through Google Tag. Let's serve for Google Tag event settings and we are going to have three parameters. One is for item, currency, and value. You might notice that if event parameter is standard such as value currency, you will have a tick mark. Otherwise, if you are using something else, maybe custom, then you won't see this tick mark. Uh, for the items, we are going to refer to the data layer and point it where the item array exists. By default, item array is always inside the e-commerce and if the developer has configured everything correctly then this is how the end data layer will look like so let's select this we can see that e-commerce is an object and you can identify that using the curly braces and in order to access anything inside an object you have to use dot parameter for example if you want to access items you are going to use e-commerce dot item so let's do that Let's create a variable so we, we don't have to do this every time. And we are going to create a data layer variable that will select the value of e-commerce dot 
item. Let's rename it to data layer variable ecommerce.item. Now let's select the currency parameter. This is also going to be the data layer variable. Currency, let's go back to the data layer and see where exactly the currency is. So currency is under ecommerce items and in the first object we can see the currency is here. So we can get the currency from this first object inside the items array. As we said, if it is an object and in order to get anything from an object you need to use a dot notation. However, if something is inside a list, list or array is identified using the square brackets and in order to access anything inside that you need to use the object positioning parameter for example if you want to access this first object inside the array you will use zero if you want to use the second one you will use one and if you want to access the third object you will use two these are called indexes of an array so we want e-commerce items and we want to get the value from the first object so we will use zero and then we need a dot currency because dot is again the currency currency parameter so we need dot zero dot currency dlv and let's paste everything here uh, we don't have a value parameter coming in so we can remove that for now and we can name it gd event settings and this is eec event parameter let's save this and we can reuse the same variable for all these different events let's go back to the tag and create an event tag for google analytics 4 that will finally trigger on this trigger of the website let's create new for the trigger we are going to select the trigger we just created for custom begin checkout and and for the event, we are going for Google Analytics event. Uh, for the measurement ID, we can select the same measurement ID we created at the beginning of the video. Uh, the name of the standard event is begin checkout. Make sure your spellings are right. And for the event parameter, we can refer back to the same event setting parameter that we have used. You can click on show inherited parameter and it will show you that by default, it is pulling in e-commerce and item. Let's rename it to GA4 custom event begin underscore checkout. Let's hit save and do a test in order to make sure everything is working all right. Let's hit preview on our Google Tag Manager web container so the debug view window will connect with the Shopify store. And let's go back to the Shopify store. Let's go to the cart directly because we know which event we are trying to fire. And let's click on checkout. So as we have clicked on the checkout, we can see that the data layer is populating and we can click on the event to see if everything is working all right. So the trigger has fired and we can see that in the GA4 view that it has sent the all the item parameter that were attached with it and it has also sent currency parameter that we have assigned to it. And to verify it, you can go back to the analytics, admin and debug view and you can see that we have received the begin checkout event and the begin checkout event is sending the items parameter with all the items that we have sent. Perfect, everything is working all right. The last and final step is to make sure that we publish the changes. So let's publish that. GA4 begin checkout. Uh, if you don't publish the changes that all the changes you have made so far will be in your draft window they will not be published on the final website so right now we have successfully configured begin checkout event on the shopify store if you want to see how to configure purchase event you can refer to this video